In this video, we will be taking a look at installing vCenter Server 6.0 with an embedded platform services controller on a Windows machine. This installation process is different from previous versions of vCenter Server. For more information about these changes and the installation process, see the vSphere 6.0 installation and setup guide. In this example, we have already downloaded and mounted the latest version of the vCenter Server 6.0 installation media obtained from the My VMware portal. If the Auto Run feature is enabled, you may simply double click on the drive that contains the vCenter Server 6.0 installation media. However, if this feature is disabled, within the software installer directory double click autorun.exe to start the installer. Within the menu, select vCenter Server for Windows and click Install. Review the welcome page and follow the prompts to accept the license agreement. Next, select vCenter Server and Embedded Platform Services Controller and click Next. Enter the system network name, preferably a fully qualified domain name or FQDN. If you are entering an IP address, verify that this is a static IP. At this point, it is important that the system name specified does not change, as this cannot be changed after deployment. If the system name does change, a reinstall of vCenter Server is required. Click Next. Now select Create a vCenter Single Sign-On Domain. Provide the domain name for vCenter Single Sign-On. For example, we have chosen the default of vSphere.local. This name is unique to vCenter Single Sign-On and should not be the same as an existing Active Directory domain within the environment. Next, provide the password for the vCenter Single Sign-On Administrator account. This will be used to log in to the vCenter Single Sign-On and vCenter Server once the installation is complete. In our case, we will be using the user administrator at vSphere.local where vSphere.local is the name of the domain we chose for vCenter Single Sign-On. Finally, provide the site name for vCenter Single Sign-On. The site name may contain alphanumeric characters, however non-ASCII or high ASCII characters are not supported. Click Next. Select the vCenter Server Service Account option appropriate to your environment. If you are using an external database that requires Windows integrated authentication, it is recommended to specify a user service account that has the appropriate permissions to access the external database. In this example, we will be using the embedded database and have selected the Use Windows Local System Account option as it does not require Windows integrated authentication. Click Next. Now select the database you want to use for vCenter Server. In this example, we selected the Use an Embedded Database option, which is suitable for small-scale deployments. Click Next. For each component, accept the default port numbers. If another service is using the default ports, you may define alternative ports here. Click Next. If you would like to change the destination folders in which vCenter Server is installed, you may change them here. If you do choose to install to a custom location, do not use folders with names that include an exclamation mark. In this example, we are installing to the default location, so we will just click Next to continue. Finally, review the summary of the installation settings and click Install. The installation process may take a few minutes to complete while services are installed, configured, and started. In this example, we have shortened this process. Once the installation is complete, you are given the option to launch the vSphere web client and log in to vCenter Server, or you may click Finish to exit the installer. This concludes our look at installing vCenter Server 6.0 with an embedded platform services controller on a Windows machine. For further video tutorials, subscribe to our KBTV YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing VMware.